if it was Saturday night, you'd be honking your horns like crazy now. Yeah. And I love that. that That's how we came up with last night. Okay, so welcome to Emmaus Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Mark Winkler. We're in Orange City, Florida. Uh, you know where we are. I'm saying this for those who might be watching online live or who might watch it later on. It is Sunday morning, May 16th, and it's beautiful outside. What a great day to be alive. What a great day to be able to praise God together. We have lots of people here today. Does anybody have a count? We'll have one later. Um, anyway, we have we have the choir here all at one table. <laughs> and, uh, we're glad to Glad to have lots and lots of you today. Some of you are guests and, and friends of Emmaus Lutheran. We're glad to have you. I had somebody ask me this morning about my leg because they saw me um, sitting with my legs crossed and they knew that that's a no-no after having a, a, um, a knee replacement. And uh, so I, I showed up for surgery on May 6th. Yep. And I had cuts on my leg, which was from yard work and that was stupid because the surgeon said no yard work and so I thought well a little yard work would be okay and I was wrong and I had cuts on my leg and the doctor was worried about infection and because um, infection in the leg is really bad and he explained what really bad meant and I could either be without a knee connecting my upper and lower legs for three months while the infection was treated or even as bad as having my leg amputated. So I weighed the options and we waited. So I didn't weigh the options, it was clear. And so right now surgery is scheduled for June 3rd. And so it's coming right up. And um, what else? We, um, so as I'm looking around, there are a few people without masks on. There are a few people with masks on. And according to the news that we heard together this week, um, we're changing, you know, it's it's a changing world, and um, for now, we're, we're, I think we're kind of testing the water. You ever approach a swimming pool and you just stick your toe in to see how it feels to decide whether you're full in or definitely not in? And um, I think that's where we are right now, and our council meeting is this Tuesday night, and so your council is going to work together. We're gonna to figure out what's best for us in the immediate future and in the short term and as we look uh, ahead as far as we can, which doesn't tend to be very far into the future at all, but we're gonna do the best that we can in making good decisions together because we, when we get together, lots of people putting their best ideas together is better than just one person making a decision all by themselves, and so I didn't want to. If you read my um, email blast from Friday, you saw that I was optimistic and yet cautious about making a new declaration without the wisdom of the council to help. Um, why are we in here? Um, we're, we're painting and repair, well, first of all, repairing and cleaning and, um, and, and redoing whatever needed to be redone in the portico, the drive-through um, part of our, of our entry, and the, the, then the rest of the entry, the narthex, all of that is being cleaned and stained and uh, some kind of a polyurethane on top of it. And then in the sanctuary, the, um, the high ceilings are being um, fixed and repainted, and it is amazing the amount of work there is, the detail of, you know, I look at huge ceilings and think, oh, it's pretty easy to just paint a huge area, but every light, every fixture, every, you know, all of the sprinkler things, everything has to be taped completely. So it is a lot of work. I don't think in the church they've actually even begun painting, and they've been at it since Monday, and it's amazing. I, I can't recommend that you go in there because there's stuff everywhere, um, but just know that the process here is exciting. There's, there's just an energy and excitement going on. Um, if you had a chance to look through the announcements as they were rolling past, um, I was being creative this morning, and okay, it was the coffee too, and, um, and I said, we're, what did I say? We're, together we're stronger, or strong, 
Yeah, we're gonna look it up. It's the new motto, and I can't remember it. <laughs> Stronger than before. Is that what it is? Stronger than before. It's gonna be a sermon title, maybe even a sermon series that I create coming up. Anyway, Stronger Than Before, there that's our new motto. What is it? Stronger Than Before. <laughs> I don't have a screen in front of me like I do in the sanctuary. I, I'm done with announcements, welcome. Um, and read the email blast for next week. If you're not receiving our email blast, write your, write your phone, or write your email address, write your name down, and we'll be adding that to, um, to our email blast. If you're at home and watching and you want to, um, want to get our email blast, um, it is Emmaus, tell me. Emmaus office? Emmaus office at Emmaus Orange City. Emmaus Orange City .com. Emmaus office at Emmaus Orange City .com. Let's worship together. Let us pray. Let us pray. Faithful and holy God, we give you thanks that we are here this morning and we are here with a renewed energy and a new strength because. We're, we are stronger than we were before. We're stronger when we're together. You separate us and we, we lose our strength and we find our weakness and, and we are being brought back together with new strength today. We pray for the health and safety of, of everyone who's here, of our congregation, our community, our nation, and the world. We pray that people will be wise in how they live their life from now and, and moving forward. We pray that People will be kind to one another as they um, experience masked and maskless um, people in their community. We pray, God, that you would um, be a force of love in the world, and especially in the Holy Land right now, where um, the Israelis and the Palestinians are having an intense war. Lord, bring peace into that area, and bring hopefulness to those who live there, those who um, who have leadership positions there, those who are in harm's way. We ask, God, that your love would surround each person with safety and guard their lives. We pray now as we worship together that you would enter into this place and into our hearts, filling us, us with the love that you have shown to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, crucified, risen, and ascended into heaven, seated at your right hand. We pray all of these things, God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together um, the day of resurrection.
Let us pray together. Almighty God, your only Son was taken into the heavens and in your presence intercedes for us. Receive us and our prayers for all the world and in the end bring everything into your glory through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I want you to remember with me back to Easter when we lit the what we call the Paschal candle, and it's we lit it at the Easter vigil and the and the candle. Well, this is the tiki torch that we've been using outside in the parking lot, and the Paschal candle that we used in the sanctuary is a little bit um, hard to get to right now in the sanctuary. So we brought this here for this morning's worship, but we've been lighting that candle to represent. Christ's light in the world, that as he rose from the dead, he, he brought his light back into the world. It says in the first chapter of John that the world tried to um, extinguish the light of Christ and couldn't do it. The light comes back. So we lit the Paschal candle um, on, at the Easter vigil, and it has been lit at every worship service until on Thursday of this week, which was um, the... the celebration of the ascension of our Lord. And when Jesus was um, ascended into heaven, that light, that presence of Christ was, you know, ascended into heaven. Christ is the light. It's Jesus. So the light, we, at that time, we put the light out. Um, doesn't mean that Christ isn't present. present. My sermon's going to be about that in part today. But we do um, still light the, the Paschal candle for funerals, for baptisms, for confirmation, for, you know, uh, celebrations of life. And um, just, I wanted you to know the significance of the extra candle here today as we actually are observing um, the ascension of our Lord, not Easter 7 today. So here the, here the reading for us, the day of ascension, which was last Thursday. Then Jesus said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. And look, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then Jesus led them out as far as Bethany. And lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him. And they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Let the people of God say together, Amen. 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 So if I were to ask you to point to heaven. Oh, well, I am asking. Go ahead, point to heaven. Sure. And the people in Australia right now are really upset. Because <laughs> they're pointing in the opposite direction from what we're pointing right now. Yeah. I mean, heaven, we, last night at the beginning of the worship service, we, we observed a rocket launch, and we just looked down the end of the parking lot. I didn't even know there was a rocket launch. Is this, this is a typical, typical Floridian. We don't even have to pay attention hardly anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's not really true. I just didn't happen to know about the one yesterday. And at the beginning of the service, just just as Joni was finishing her prelude music, this um, this rocket launch, and we could see it from where we were, and it was so cool. 
But we know from our space explorations that heaven is not a location that we can get to by any mode of transportation, including um, in rocket ships. So I want to explain to you the best I can about heaven today, where it is, what it is. And I got nothing. <laughs> I don't. I got nothing. You know, in the Bible, I love this explanation of heaven or description. It's in Revelation chapter 21, and um, starting at verse eh, 18. The wall, and it's talking about the new city of Jerusalem. It's maybe that's a euphemism for heaven. I know that the book of Revelation is a vision that that was given to a pastor whose name was John. It was a vision. This is not actual historical, but it was a vision, a divinely inspired vision that was given to John, and he wrote it down for our benefit today. And and it says the wall of that new city is built of jasper, while the city is pure gold, clear as glass. The foundations of the wall of the city are adorned with every jewel. The first was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, and the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, and the eleventh, I don't even know how to say that. Okay, and the twelfth amethyst. And there's 12 gates, and there are pearly gates, and each of the gates is a single pearl. And the street of the city is pure gold and transparent as glass. And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day. Bad news. Or no, 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 no. The, the gates will never be shut by day. Okay, that's good news. And there will be no night there. I usually, when I paraphrase it, I say it differently than that. I say, the gates are only closed at night. That's bad news. And it's never night. That's good news. We are always welcome. If you've ever been on the ride at Disney World called um, Haunted Mansion, and you don't probably have to wear a mask walking up to the Haunted Mansion, you may have to wear a mask yet inside. But one of the things they say is that there are 999 haunts in the Haunted Mansion, and there's always room for one more. <laughs> it could be even 1,000 then. There's always room for one more. The, it, the gates of heaven are only closed at night, and it's never night. Love that. This is a God of inclusion, a God that invites and gathers, and we've get, been gathered here this morning to talk about Jesus' ascension into heaven and what that means for us, because this includes us in a very significant way, and I'm about to tell you why. The gospel that we heard today is from Luke, and Luke wrote another book in the Bible. Anybody know what that is? Acts. Acts. Yeah, the Acts of the Apostles. And um, and he, Luke, writes about the ascension in the first chapter of Acts. Let me just read you a little bit. It's going to sound kind of familiar because it's the same writer, but there's more detail. So when, that, when Jesus and his disciples had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus replied, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. And they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Now we might imagine that heaven is up because the Bible is saying that. And yet, I have to tell you that the word in Greek for sky and heaven is the same word. And I don't know how they decided they, 
whoever the translators of the Bible are. I don't know how they decided that one was going to be sky and one was going to be heaven. You know, Greek words are helpful in a lot of ways. And, and in the, at other times, I think they cloud what we're trying to understand. Did Jesus go into the sky? Did he go into heaven? Where is heaven? What's it look like? Well, I already told you what it looks like, except for that one gem that I forgot to practice saying. <laughs> J-A-C-I-N-T-H. Anybody know how to say that? Jason? Jason? Is that what it is? Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> There's something that has been gnawing at me since last yesterday afternoon and it's time time in Greek there's two different words for time and probably a lot more than two different words in English for the word for time but one word in Greek for time is chronos and that's the time on your wristwatch the time of day it is 10:24 and another kind of time is kairos time, opportunity time, um, uh, pregnant moments, those, those moments that come and go, and if you miss them, you've missed out. Now, in the reading from Acts that I shared just a bit ago, marker let go um, so the disciples said Lord is this the time is this the chronos when you will restore the kingdom to Israel and Jesus replied it is not for you to know the time the chronos or the season is what I what I said and actually in the NRSV it's periods but in Greek it's chron or it's kairos it's not for you to know the time, 1025 now, or the opportunity. Man, that has been gnawing at me because, because Jesus says that we don't get to know the time of day or night, but we also don't get to know the opportunity. And the opportunity is always there for us. How do I know that? It's because heaven's never closed. How do I know that? It's because God's love for the world, which is unchanging, has sent his son Jesus into the world. God loves the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. Not to condemn the world, but to save the world. And that promise is as true today as it was back in John chapter 1. It's true every day. It says in 2 Peter chapter 3 that the Lord is not slow to return, as some people think of slowness. But Jesus is waiting to come back so that more and more and more and more and more people can turn to the Lord and follow him. Isn't that cool? I love that. All, all of those opportunities, all of those chronos moments, I think, are meant for us to pay attention to. I think that right now we're in a chronos moment in the world, a moment that is paused and waiting in anticipation between pandemic and post-pandemic. Pre-pandemic is gone. We'll never be able to return to pre-pandemic. There's not a normal to be returned to. It's a new normal to be approached and embraced. Mm -hmm. And that's what the disciples are facing too as they watch Jesus go up. They watch him ascend into heaven and they knew and they know that from that point on that there is no way to go back to the way it was before. Now it is post-ascension time. It is time for the people of God to get together to, to become the church that Jesus Christ is expecting us to become. And they know that he has expectations because if you've ever seen a, a crystal clear crystal, it's as smooth as glass pond or lake. And you take a pebble and you drop it in and it makes these concentric ripples. And they're, they're perfectly shaped like the Target bullseye at, from Target stores. And 
Jesus said, you are my witnesses. And um, I, I, I also had this idea cross my mind today that this is evangelism. And, it, and it's like stewardship in that we are stewards simply because we have stuff. You don't even have to be a believer to be a steward because if you have stuff, you're a steward. You do something with your stuff. That's what a steward does. You have stuff, so you have to take care of that. You mow the lawn, you're being a steward of your lawn. You brush your teeth, you're being a steward of your teeth. You don't brush your teeth, now you're being a bad steward. You don't mow the lawn, now you're being a bad steward. The point is you are either a good steward or a bad steward. You are a steward, that's a fact. Jesus says to the disciples, you are witnesses. And they can be good witnesses. How do they do that? By proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ crucified and risen and ascended into heaven where he is seated at the right hand of God the Father. They can be bad witnesses by going and locking the door and keeping it to themselves or other ways of being bad witnesses. Jesus says, you are witnesses. And he's encouraging them to be good witnesses. And he says, start in Jerusalem. Start telling people in Jerusalem and immediately around you about Jesus Christ crucified, risen, and ascended into heaven. And then after Jerusalem, go into all Judea. That's the next concentric circle. And tell all Judea that Jesus Christ is crucified and risen and ascended into heaven. And after Judea, then go to Samaria, which is, uh, at this point, I think it's, it's a, not a euphemism, but it's a general statement to say everybody who's not Jewish, who's not already in that, in that chosen people of God, because they have to know that they're chosen to go to Samaria and then go to the ends of the earth and be good witnesses. And it doesn't stop there. It has to go through you and through me. Not just Jesus' disciples. And there were only 11 left after Judas couldn't stand himself after what he did in betraying Jesus. It's you and me. This is a fable. It's not true. But I can, I can imagine a truth to it. So Jesus was telling his disciples, go, you are witnesses, go. And tell the world, starting in Jerusalem, then some, then Judea, then Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And then Jesus ascends into heaven, and the angels say, well, that's a great plan. What if they don't do it? What's plan B? And Jesus says, there's no plan B. We are it. Jesus says in Matthew 28, he says, go and make disciples of all nations. He's telling his disciples to make new disciples. Well, if it stops at that point, then there are no more disciples and there's no more sharing the good news. And yet, those who become disciples then become teachers and they find their own disciples. It's just me telling you and you telling somebody else, and this is good. This is being a good witness, not a bad witness. It's a good witness when you share with others what you have, what you have experienced. Yeah. That's how we're involved in this story. We're very involved in the story of Jesus' ascension into heaven. Wherever it is. I mean, it's, a, it's not a mythical place. It's a, it's a mystical place. There's mystery. There's mystery shrouding Jesus Christ crucified and risen and ascended into heaven. There's mystery. There's mystery in, in Jesus Christ who says, Eat, this is my body. It looks like a wafer, but it's the body of Christ. There's mystery in that. This is my blood. It's a glass of a little cup of wine or a little cup of grape juice. But Jesus says, this is my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this in remembrance of me. There's mystery in that. I can't tell you anymore um, how Jesus is present in the body and his body and blood present in the little wafer and the wine. More, any more than I can tell you what heaven is going to look like. I can't. It's a mystery. And we've been invited into the mystery. I love in first, no, no, no. Colossians chapter 1. I don't remember the verse right now. 
but it talks about a mystery. And then it says, the mystery of Jesus is this. Do you want to know it or no? Because I can just say, go in peace. <laughs> the mystery is this. Christ is in you. That's a great mystery. And I can't explain that one either. Christ is in each of us. And Christ has said, you are witnesses. Go and witness. Start, in, start where you are. And let that reach out. We don't have to go to Jerusalem and start there. Start where you are and be witnesses to Jesus Christ. What you have heard, what you have seen, what you have tasted in the bread and the wine. What you have experienced, the love of Jesus Christ being played out every single day around you in the world. Yeah. Jesus, he went up. And he's coming back. When? We're not to know the Kronos or the Kairos. But I know as people of God, we don't want to miss the opportunity, the Kairos moment. And so we live our we live our lives in anticipation, looking up, yeah, and, and speaking out, reaching out with the love of Jesus Christ and being good witnesses for the sake of the gospel. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, 
who has spoken by the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, let us pray for the witness of the church, for the wholeness of creation, and for all who are in need. Lord Most High, you sent your Son to redeem all creation. Enlighten and expand the witness of the church everywhere. Ground us in the power and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, make right. us a new creation. Ruler of all the earth, you have fashioned a habitat for all your creatures, and you fill the earth with your glory. Give rain where it is needed, and rescue those inundated by floods. Mend what we have torn in the fabric of creation, and replenish and nourish your world. Lord, in your mercy, I the new creation. Sovereign God, in the majesty of your love, you rule the world with justice and mercy. Give those in authority the spirit of your love, so that all who are hungry and poor receive food and resources, and all people flourish and live in peace. We earnestly pray that the war taking place in the Holy Land will come to a swift end, and that those who have the power to end the bombing will work with others for peace. Hold our service women and men in your care, and provide safety for all who live or work in dangerous places. Lord, in your mercy, creation. healer of our every ill, we give thanks for the we give thanks that the pandemic that has devastated people in every land seems to be slowing and our lives are reopening. You know our deepest pains and sorrows, you know our hopes and our dreams. Replenish those who are depressed, sad, or exhausted. Mend the brokenhearted. Restore the sick and all who live with cancer or other deadly diseases. Grant healing miracles where wholeness is possible and the promise of new life where bodies are broken beyond physical healing. Lord, in your mercy, make us a new creation. We entrust all our prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them by the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to take out the communion wafer that you received on the way in today. It's already been consecrated ahead of time. Um, we're not going to actually um, partake of the body of Christ until after we pray the Lord's Prayer, and then I'll just say a general um, for everyone to go ahead and take an eat. So, um, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. And now I want to invite anybody who wants to come forward for the blood of Christ, either the wine, which is purple, or grape juice, which is white. You don't have to. Christ, you have already received Christ. Communion in one kind, but we have received Christ already. 
if you want to come forward. Um, I don't know how to do this in a room like this. Do you have? Line up the room. Okay, just come. Okay, just come. My dad used to say, come now for all has been prepared. Yeah.
and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Before the benediction and um, and the sending him, uh, if you are staying for the Bible study, we're going to meet in here, or if you're rushing home to be a part of the Bible study, um, we're still going to do it on Zoom. But you could meet in here with us. We're, we're going to um, be broadcasting live from here if you're interested. Anyway, so um, receive the benediction. May God, who has brought us from death into new life, now fill you with great joy in living. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. to serve. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.